Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will speak about the trend following and mean reversion in Bitcoin. Hello everyone, my name is Radan Vojtko and I'm CEO of Quantpedia.com. Uh, I would like to thank you that you picked this video from all of the other videos that are on the internet and on YouTube. Uh, so uh, today I would again like to show you uh, one trading strategy. Uh, it will be again uh, built on top of uh, Bitcoin prices, uh, but uh, as usually our journey will begin in other asset class. Uh, as uh, in we in Quantpedia like to use academic research that is related to one asset class and take Gaudia out of that and uh, implement it on another asset class. So that's the way how we see that we can come up with some original ideas for new trading strategies uh, on new asset classes. So uh, today I will firstly show you uh, two uh, anomalies or trading strategies uh, on equities. Uh, and they will be related to uh, trend following and or trend and reversal. So the first one is uh, you know, classical trend, trend following strategy, nothing new. There are like hundreds or there are a lot of uh, a lot of papers, a lot of strategies related to trend uh, on all of the other uh, asset classes, uh, equities, commodities, bonds, etc. etc. So uh, we can take a look on trend following effect in stocks. The trend following effect in stocks says that if we buy the stocks that are close uh, to new highs, or the stocks that are in a strong, strong uptrend, uh, we cannot perform. Uh, we cannot perform the stocks that are not close to uh, new highs or that are not uh, in a strong trend. Uh, so that's that's the trend uh, trend effect, and uh, we have uh, another effect that's uh, called reversal. Uh, and the reversal is saying that we can pick uh, pick stocks that are currently in a, uh, in a uh, short drawdown or in a small, sorry, I need to write it correctly. Whatever, whatever. So, so we can pick the stocks uh, that are currently uh, shortly out of favor uh, for a very short time. Uh, and uh, uh, if we buy these uh, stocks, uh, we uh, are uh, the strong hands buying from the weak hands, we provide liquidity to the market uh, and we receive the risk compensation for doing this service and we can also outperform um, uh, on a relative basis the other stocks uh, that are not so, uh, not so, very uh, not so down. Now, uh, we can use this knowledge and we can try to find the effects uh, that are similar in the nature uh, in the cryptocurrencies. So the easiest way is to try, take, take a look on uh, just a simple Bitcoin. Of course, we can uh, try to use this uh, information and use a broad, uh, broad universe of multiple uh, cryptocurrencies. But just for a moment, just uh, you know, uh, for simplicity, take a look. Uh, how does it look like on a Bitcoin? So uh, Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin prices uh, had a very strong performance in the I don't know, last, uh, last lot of the years, uh, but I have mentioned in the previous video, uh, so we had three very strong drawdowns in 2015, in 2019 or 18, 2018 and 2022. Uh, it was around the first two drawdowns were around 80 percent and the last one the current drawdown is around 60 percent but it can be it can be worse um, now uh, we can try to build a better strategy by not holding a bitcoin all of the time but we can try to time the market uh, and we can use the, the trend following and reversal rules and to try to uh, move in and out of the bitcoin market. so the first uh, so um, we are using the data for uh, from the Gemini exchange. So the uh, sample, the analysis sample starts in, uh, in 2015 and it's until, uh, until 2022. Um, now, uh, we are looking or examining how does the Bitcoin behave 
when it's at its maximum, when it's below its maximum, when it's over its minimum, or right at the minimum. So uh, we are looking at four, four different types of the strategies, and uh, we are doing the statistical analysis. Uh, we define the minimum uh, or the maximum as the local maximum over the last 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50 days. And it's same for the minimum, so we define the local minimum as a minimum price over the last 10, 20, 30, 40 or 50 days. And we are looking uh, for strategies that hold the uh, Bitcoin for the next day. Uh, and we take a look at what is the performance of those strategies. What we see is that uh, the uh, Bitcoin is the mostly um, risky at the times when it's below its maximum value or over its minimum value so at the times when the uh, when the bitcoin is uh, at the maximum price uh, we can it's uh, strongly trending and you can expect or the risk of the reversal is small uh, is the smaller and we expect we can expect that in, in, for a very short time the bitcoin can continue in a, in a trending direction in the up direction and uh, when we are on a uh, local minimum, uh, the Bitcoin is uh, very low, uh, it's uh, very oversold uh, and uh, paradox paradoxically uh, we can expect a very short term reversal. Uh, um, so when all of the big hands sold the Bitcoin holdings, uh, we can for a very short, term, uh, short time enter the market uh, and have a low lower risk of uh, drawdown than in other times. So. Mm, let's take a look on the first part of the first part of the strategy. So it means buying the Bitcoin of the maximum. So mm, here are the results of the five different strategies. So uh, it's a robustness test, and we can see that when we buy on the top, uh, on the local maximum. So when we buy and hold for one day after the local maximum uh, is reached. Uh, we have a positive performance, the drawdowns are uh, lower than in case uh, of the holding Bitcoin all of the time. Uh, of course, uh, it depends uh, how we define the local maximum. Uh, it can, we can define it via the shorter or long term period. Uh, it seems that the Bitcoin for the Bitcoin is the best to define the local maximum on the shorter period. So it means the, 10, uh, the rules of the strategy, uh, which is looking at the 10 day maximum price. Uh, has a better performance than uh, the longer period. Uh, and then you can take a look uh, how does the performance look like when we buy on the local minimum. So when we buy the Bitcoin, uh, when we are exactly at the local minimum and hold it for just one day. Uh, here we can see that the robustness test is not so strong. So it means that there is a positive performance when we buy uh, at the local or the local minimum, that, but the best local minimum is around 10 days. So when we buy Bitcoin at the local 10 day minimum and hold it for one day, uh, we have relatively interesting performance uh, with not such, uh, such a high drawdown. Now we can com combine these two strategies. So those two strategies uh, are, uh, com are complement to each other. So we cannot be uh, on the local 10 day minimum and at the same time at the local 10 day maximum. Uh, so we can mix those two together, to, uh, to those, those two strategies together, and they do not overlap each other. Uh, and in, in this case, if you do it so, uh, we have a strategy with the performance uh, 98% and 47% uh, drawdown. So it means that uh, we increase the performance of the uh, over the holding Bitcoin from 60% to I don't know nearly 100%, and we decrease the, the drawdown from I don't know 80-90% to uh, something uh, near to 40% or uh, 47%. So uh, we improved over the holding Bitcoin uh, all of the time. Now I would like to, to before before I will end this video, I would like to uh, speak about the risk. So uh, this strategy contains two types uh, or this strategy is uh, combined from two sub strategies. Uh, it's not such a big problem with the trending part of the strategy. So there is not a very big risk when you are on the on the top of the bit, uh, on the top of the range and you are buying into this range. Uh, yeah, there is a possibility that uh, the next day can be negative, 
Uh, but there is not the high possibility that the next day will be, I don't know, mi minus 80% of them. But uh, on the other hand, the, the second part of the strategy, when you buy the local minimum, uh, it can happen uh, in the future that there will be a black swan event uh, that will cause or that will show that the buying at the local minimum uh, is a is a basically strategy of uh, picking the nickels in the front of Steamroller. So it's a, it's a risky part of the strategy. I would not advise to use it uh, with a high percentage. Uh, for those that do not know what this was the Black Monday, so in 1987, uh, so before the 1987, uh, the US stock market never uh, went down more than, I don't know, 10, 10 or 50% uh, over, the, over the day. Uh, Black Monday 1987, uh, the US stock market is uh, crashed minus 22% in one day. So um, it can happen in a, in a Bitcoin. Uh, so we can have like minus 60, minus 70% uh, daily performance if nothing happens. The problem with the mineral reversion part is that it will usually or probably happen at the level of the local minimum. So when we buy at the local minimum, uh, it can happen that the next day uh, we will uh, catch the crash. So the buying local minimum uh, is a strategy that gives you uh, performance, but uh, because you are compensated for the risk of holding the asset in a downtrend, uh, you are mm, basically an insurance company uh, that is providing the liquidity for the market. Uh, and you are uh, having a risk that in case the Black Swan, Black Swan event or a Black Monday event uh, comes, you are the one who must pay. So I will be very cautious uh, with the second part of the strategy, uh, but uh, otherwise those are very interesting to anomalies that are happening uh, in a Bitcoin crisis. Interested? Then pick another video to learn more or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.